Hello, welcome to module two titled, Who is on my team? Understanding the roles and abilities of different health professions. I'm Dr. Susan Hyde. I chair the Division of Oral Epidemiology and Dental Public Health at UCSF's School of Dentistry. This module will focus on the following learning objectives. Describe the training programs and potential career paths for some of the health professions. Outline the process by which the scope of practice is determined for a healthcare profession. Define the formal and informal roles and responsibilities of healthcare professionals involved in collaborative care. Discuss the roles and responsibilities of the patient, family, and or caregiver in patient-centered care. And explain how different care settings could affect the roles relationships and strategies for communication to support collaborative teen care. Segment one, training for the health professions. Since there are so many different healthcare professions, we won't be able to cover them all. We will describe the training programs and potential career paths for the five professions taught at UCSF in addition to social work. Dentists diagnose, treat, and prevent conditions and diseases of the oral cavity. Students begin their four-year training program after having achieved their bachelor's degree. Graduates earn either a doctorate of dental surgery or dental medicine. Specialty training occurs in residency programs, many of which involve additional degree training such as Master's of Science or, do or Doctorate of Medicine and can take between two to six years to complete. After completing a residency, additional specialty training is available through a fellowship program such as in geriatrics. Dentists and specialists often run their own practice. Some work in community health centers, while others are part of a hospital surgical team. Physicians diagnose, treat, and prevent diseases and conditions of the body. After receiving their bachelor's degree, students attend medical school for four years, graduating with a doctorate of medicine. Specialty training, for example, in pediatrics, occurs during the residency, which lasts between three to seven years. Some specialties require additional training in a fellowship program following the residency. Physicians practice in a variety of hospital, private practice, and community health settings. Nurses perform assessments, deliver counseling and education, provide direct patient care, and supervise the care of other providers. The registered nurse is a provider whose education and training can take one of a number of paths, lasting between two to five years. RNs can acquire a diploma through a hospital-based school of nursing, an associate degree from a community college, or a bachelor of science degree from a college or university. The advanced practice registered nurse is an RN who has gone on to obtain a master's degree and up to 1,000 additional clinical training hours. APRN roles include nurse practitioner, clinical nurse specialist, certified nurse midwife, and certified registered nurse anesthetist. An RN may also seek specialty recognition through additional education and training for careers in public health, health policy, or to concentrate in a particular field such as neonatal critical care. Nurses practice in all healthcare settings, including hospitals, ambulatory care facilities, and a variety of other outpatient settings. We are now going to hear from Hector Zamudio, who is a current nursing student at UCSF in the master's entry program. In this video, he talks about his training program and possible career path. Uh, so I began, before I began my venture into the medical field, I had this impression that nurses were doctor's assistants and that they only provided emotional support, like holding someone's hand and saying, the doctors will be here soon. Um, they were only there for waitress support, like bringing someone ice chips and um, caregiver hygienic support, like, um, wiping someone's butt. Uh, but then I became an EMT and learned the importance of uh, understanding the pathophysiology and understanding medications and how intelligent nurses are uh, when it comes to being becoming uh, functioning as a medical provider. And after this program, I've definitely also learned. So that that's all. All of that is true. And even then, nurses are also uh, functioning as patient advocates, community activists, uh, the first line of defense for um, patient decompensation or anything like that, and the last line of defense for medical errors. The clinical aspect of it uh, has been the most enjoyable part for me. Um, 
from week one, uh, it was theory, uh, learning nursing skills, and then going into clinical practice with other nurses, working nurses, and that's probably been the most enjoyable part. It's been connecting all the dots, uh, making everything, make sure, making sure everything makes sense, and really learning on the job, and that's the kind of learning that I like, and it's been probably the most um, fruitful in the sense that I learn most and I've learned best and everything that I learned while I'm in practice is what I keep in my head the most and has been the best um, learning and practice for me. So the MEPN program allows me to first get my RN in the first year and after this I hope to function as a registered nurse in an emergency room to gain insight in the emergency room and issues that are involved with hospital and ER recidivism and what we can do in the ER to uh, make that reduction um, and to better the um, health promotion uh, for the community. And that ties into the second and third year of the advanced practice public health nursing um, APRN here at UCSF. And I really hope to gain more knowledge for uh, program planning, program implementation, and research so that I can enter that realm of uh, transitional care and ER recidivism. In California, pharmacists perform patient assessments, order and interpret drug therapy related laboratory tests, and work with other healthcare providers to initiate, adjust, and discontinue medications in order to manage a patient's health issues. Students begin their four-year training program after having achieved their bachelor's degree. Graduates earn a doctorate of pharmacy. Additional training is optimal in either general practice or specialty pharmacy, pharmacy such as infectious diseases from a two, one to two year residency program. Two year fellowships in clinical, industry or research training are also possible. Pharmacists can pursue a career in community pharmacy, practice in clinical settings such as a hospital or work in industry on drug development. Physical therapists focus on both musculoskeletal and neuromuscular wellness and disability with the goal of optimizing functional mobility. After achieving their bachelor's degree, physical therapy students attend graduate school for three years, graduating with a doctorate of physical therapy. Specialty training occurs during residency programs such as orthopedics or women's health. Fellowship programs provide post-professional learning experiences in clinical practice, education, or research. Physical therapists practice in clinical settings such as hospitals, both in acute care and acute re rehabilitation settings, also in skilled nursing facilities, schools, and outpatient clinics. Licensed clinical social workers provide psychosocial and health counseling, information, and referral services for individuals, families, or groups. After obtaining a bachelor's degree, social work students complete a two-year master's of social work program. Graduates then spend an additional two years in supervised clinical experiences in order to complete their training. Social workers who want to focus on teaching, research, policy analysis, or, or administration may choose doctoral education in social work or an interprofessional program. Social workers practice in state and city departments of health and human services, community-based drug and alcohol treatment programs, family service agencies, and hospital patient teams. We're now gonna hear from San Francisco State University social work student, Elliot Alomar, describe her training program and possible career path. I think before I started the program, I saw social work as very solution focused, more like case management services, crisis situations. So if someone was in need of a food box or if someone was in need of housing, kind of fixing immediate situations and then you move on to the next client. Um, I think what I've learned now is that it's not about solution focus and it's actually about trying to empower a client. Like, yeah, you want to deal with an immediate situation, but you also want to allow a client to go through their process and to kind of discover their own strength and their own power. And what I've learned is that the clients actually have the answers within themselves. Like as a social worker, if I can just provide an engaging question, you know, that makes you think about something a different way instead of trying to just rush to solve something, um, it's actually more empowering on the long run and you allow that client to build themselves up and build their self-esteem up and build their resources up to where they can 
confront different situations with or without you the next time they come along. So I think that is one of the things that I've learned and had has been a, a process for me because I want to fix things so quick and like, no, let's get it done and let's get it over with and no, we got to fix this problem and it's not about that. It's like kind of allowing the client to figure out this problem for themselves, figure out how it began as a problem, how, how it began, as, you know, how it became a problem for them, you know, and kind of allowing that, that enlightenment for themselves. So I think that's what I've learned the most so far. I think the aspect of the program that I'm enjoying the most is the different type of intellect that I'm being exposed to. You know, I have a teacher that's from India. I have a Jewish male teacher. I have a biracial teacher. I have a Japanese uh, professor, you know, so um, I think that not only do I get their intellect, which is inspiring, you know, and I also get a piece of who they are from their culture and bringing their human side into the classroom. You know, you get that. You get a little bit of their politics. You get a little bit of how they live their life and kind of what their life models are. So you, not only do you get the exposure to the academics and the books, you know, which I think also speaks to the professors. They're choosing certain books for a specific reason, you know. So I think for me, that's what's been most interesting to kind of see how each professor teaches differently. You know, we have one professor who I consider one of the most brilliant professors that I have and totally has a different way of, of teaching. You know, not the typical, let me test you to see how much you could remember type of professor. So I think that to me that's been the most um, rewarding. I'm getting so many different perspectives and so many different type of insight and so much different intellects and exposed to so many different type of books that, you know, um, I'm a, I think I'm appreciating that one of them best things about the program. So my long-term career goal is to actually become a professor of social work and the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to continue on after my master's degree I am going to pursue my doctorate so I'll have my doctorate in social work. Um, after I immediately graduate right now I'll be working at CPS for two years so after that I'll continue um, to go to school work you know work in the day and go to school at night. I also want to do consulting that's very important to me specifically within the police departments and within the school districts. I think that they deal with communities that are so vulnerable and there's so much of a misunderstanding between those two big entities and the community and so I would love to go in there and really build on this idea of what community is. So those are the main things. Professor and consulting. <laughs> That's it. Now that we've learned about the training requirements for some of the health professions, we are interested in learning about other healthcare professions and how training programs may differ around the world. Please use the forum discussion board to post your answer to the question, how would you describe the training program involved for your healthcare profession?